weeks of we're going through the fruits of the spirit and we've done love and we've done joy. So now we're off to peace. And so what I want to ask, and you know, y'all can yell it out or shout it out, what brings you peace? Or where do you feel most peaceful? Sleep. <laughs> Sleep? Where else? Or what else? Jesus? Rest. What? Rest. Rest. Lastly, we're all just Okay. Well, a place they can sit. Some of the things that I've thought of is we can have peace and rest, sleeping, silence. Some people find it when they're out in nature. I know I like going to Eastern Park and Kingwood and like just having peace there. Or even music, and that's where I find most of most of my peace is actually going into my choir room at my school and being with all of my friends that like to sing, and it's very, very peaceful there. But one of the things that I know about my choir room is even though it's peaceful, even though it's great, and I feel secure and serene in there, it can get really messy, and it can get really hectic really fast, and there are some times I don't even know what to do in there. However, one of the things I love about the peace that Christ gives me is that it's always peaceful and it's always serene and that I've always got it together. And in fact, peace is defined from the verb iro, which means to join or divine together in which that has been separated. And so you can literally describe a picture and it's binding together again, it's having it all together. And let me tell you, whether it's music, nature, silence, sleep, anything that brings you peace, if it's of this world, it is not gonna be all together. And the ultimate peace is found when you're reconciled back to God and bound together again. I mean, think about it, our peace with Christ. I have peace in Christ knowing that no matter what happens on this earth or no matter what goes on in my life, we win in the end. It says in Revelation, and I find peace in that. And if you want to, you can flip to John 14, 27. And it says in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And so this is peace that Christ leaves with us. If he left with his disciples at the time, and he always leaves with us when we are followers of him. And the world cannot offer this type of peace. It was really interesting, and I kind of can like make parallelism with it. Over this D-Now weekend, one of the things we discussed is the hope that we get from the world is not the same as real hope, you know, like, we can hope that, you know, it's going to be sunshiny, or we can hope this, or we can hope that, but there's a chance that, like, it may or may not actually happen, but with Christ, hope is real hope, and with that real hope that we have from Christ, we have real hope, and we have real peace with him. We always know that he has us in his hand, and we can't be shaken from it, and, um, Nothing's going to satisfy us if we're looking for peace in the world. I mean, if something of the world is always going to fail us and it's always not going to make us happy and it's not always going to meet, it's not always going to meet our needs, we're going to need another answer. We're going to need another thing. We're going to need another anything. And you, and I guess just, you're always going to need something like that. I was watching, it was over the break, it was really funny. I was watching a bunch of classic movies just because, I didn't know what to do with my break because I have no social life. Um, and I watched this movie, and for some of y'all who know me really well, you're going to laugh because it's this movie called Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah. And what it is is this girl, her name is Holly Golightly, and she's a celebutant, which means she's just famous for being famous. She's kind of like a classy Kim Kardashian, basically. And she's discussing with one of her friends about these things called the mean reds, and they were like, well, don't you mean being blue? Don't you mean being sad and upset? And she says this, Oh no, the blues are because you're getting fat and maybe it's raining too long and you're just sad and all. But the mean reds are horrible. Suddenly you're afraid and you don't know what you're afraid of. Do you ever get that feeling? Well, I get it. And the only thing that does any good is to jump into a cab and go to Tiffany's. Calms me right down away and the quietness and the proud look of it. Nothing very bad could happen there. And if I could find a real life place or a real life thing that would make me feel like that, 
Then I'd buy some furniture and I'd give the cat a name. If you want to know why she doesn't buy furniture and give the cat a name, you can watch the movie later. But she's, it, it just struck me when I watched it, like I had to pause it and she said, if I could find a place that made me feel like Tiffany's or I could find something that made me feel like that place, I've been to Tiffany's, it's really nice, but it's not gonna last forever. However, I actually, I even went, I was like, but I find my peace and I find my, my security in Christ. And it even says, and you don't have to flip there if you don't want to. But if you're a fast flipper, then you can. It says in Psalm 23, 4, Even though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so even though we can endure those mean reds or those things that just seem like they're going to shake us and that you just can't find any peace, you're always going to be able to find that peace or you're going to always be able to have that peace because you're in Christ. So i got to do this. Um... And not only, like, does it keep us, like, from feeling, like, shaky, like, it just keeps us from not being fearful or troubled. And I'm going to share a little bit about, like, some of the testimony I've been going through, and, and Timmy and Ashlyn and Maddie are also going to be doing it. But since I'm a senior, and this kind of applies to seniors and juniors, I'm going to talk about college. I am very scared for college. I've got three colleges I've applied to, and I thought, okay, I've gotten accepted to them. I'm good. I'm going into music. I have to audition for the music schools I'm going into. They've all said, okay, you can come audition for me. And they've all talked to me and they said, you look like a pretty good candidate. All right, that's great. But now I'm finding out not only do I have to do that, but I have to apply for housing. I have to go find a roommate. I have to figure out what college classes I want to. Some of them are asking, do I want to be an honors college? Some are asking, do I want to make my year that's normally five to six years a four year plan? They're asking me all these questions and I don't know yet. I'm trying to get through next week's test. And so I, I, I get all shaky and I get all nervous. And then I just remember that God's got it. I don't need to worry now. I need to make a decision on my own, but I know that whatever decision that I make, God's got it under control and he directs my path, not University of Houston, not Sam Houston State, not University of North Texas. God controls my path, and wherever I decide to go, he's going to use me for his glory if I let him use me for my glory. For his glory, not my glory. That'd be awkward. But, um, <laughs> and so that's where I find, like, my peace. Like, I have an audition this weekend, and everyone expects me to be nervous, and I, I'm a little nervous, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty secure. I know where I, I, I know God's got it under control. If he wants me to be at UNT, he's not going to stop anyone from making me go to UNT. He will guide me into UNT. And that helps us, and that just helps me, and that can help others be not afraid. And even Jesus warned us that, like, he, the world's going to give us trouble, but we win. He overcomes it, and we can have peace. It says in John 16, 33, turn back there. Okay, John 16, 33, where'd you go? Where'd you go? says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And so I guess what that means is we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about tomorrow's test. We don't have to worry about college. We don't have to worry about a job. We don't have to worry about our kids. We don't have to worry about anything because as long as we stay in God's path and we stay in his direction and we stay focused on him he will tell us what to do and we know where we're going in our life and we're knowing what we need and we know that he's taking care of us and that's where we can find our peace so.
So I like this next part. Go to, uh, not go anywhere. This verse 6, you have it open, hopefully. Uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, uh, by prayer and supplication, let your thanksgiving, oh, yeah. with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I butchered that one more time. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Alright. So. Here he's telling you, obviously, in the very first part, he says, do not be anxious about anything. Now, for this part, I kind of wanted to give you guys a little example um, of my life right now, how I've been struggling with this. Um, I'm a senior, just like Jordan was talking about, and uh, it's, uh, I've been having a whole lot of lasts in my life, uh, like, like, just recently. Uh, had my last D now this weekend. It was a good one to end on. And uh, you know, it's it was, it was so, uh, it's okay. right. But I just had my last D now, um, and it's been kind of you know rough. I've got my last baseball games gonna be coming up sometime this year. Um, I've got last camps. I know stuff, stuff like that. And uh, it's been really like hurt. It hurts. Like, um, and it makes me unhappy, like, to be honest with you. It just makes me really unhappy. But I can have joy in knowing that um, God's plan is going to be fulfilled through it all. And that, and like, even though the tunnel's a little dark right now, there's a light at the end of it, you know. So, uh, but uh, another thing, like, in, like, that's what's happening right now. And then, uh, as far as being anxious throughout, like, like, I'm so... <laughs> College, oh my god, college. I'm 17 years old, how am I going to school? I'm in college. Yeah. All right, well, as far as like school, I have no idea what to expect. I know what I've been told, and I know, uh, actually, that's it. All I know is what I've been told. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea other than that. Uh, so, I, and, but, um, the easiest way to deal with all these anxieties that I bring forward um, is just to trust in in God's plan. Um, like Jordan was saying, it doesn't like what school you go to, um, all of that. He, if you ask that His will is done, if you simply ask it, it says there, "Let your requests be made known to God." If your request is God, let your will be done in my life. His will is going to be done. You're going to end up where you need to be. And you're going to end up in the best possible place you can be because that's God's will. Where else would you rather be? Um, so uh, now moving on to verse 7. It says here, uh, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All right. So this is the tricky part. It's, uh, everyone's always trying to wrap their mind around like around really just God's love and his for I know I am first I don't know I said everyone I personally am always trying to wrap my mind around God's love and um, and why why would he want me to put all my anxieties on him why I'm a sinner I'm, I'm Timmy you know I mean, why would you why would he want that and uh, it's tell, it tells you here it surpasses all understanding. There, you can't understand it, and it doesn't need to be understood. Um, so, with that being said, um, I totally lost where I was going. What was the last thing I said? Don't, don't. Oh, yeah, it doesn't need to be understood. That's important to know. Um, because it, there is no understanding it. It surpasses all of our understanding. But it will guard our hearts. And I didn't even think about it. It, it will guard, our, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we'll be guarded. We'll be secure. We'll be safe. We'll be at peace. Um, and God's peace. We're, I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Okay, so 
Moving on from that, uh, Roman, oh, you can move in your Bibles to Romans 15, 13. I'm trying to beat you on this one. Got it. Alright. I'm just going to have you read it. Uh, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may have found in hope. Okay, so here, what he is saying is that, uh, I'm going to go through it again slower because I need to do that for me. Well, by the God of hope, fill, by the God of hope, may, may the God of hope fill you with all joy. Don't laugh at me. May the God of hope uh, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So, uh, the God of hope, uh, hope that, you know, in my future, he'll be, he'll, he'll be guiding it and he'll put me where I need to be. You know, uh, I need, it says, um, with all joy and peace in believing, I need to believe, really, I truly believe that he is going to, I said that weird, I truly believe that he's going to put me where I need to be and um, just trust. That's what it really all boils down to is having trust that uh, his plan is righteous, his plan is holy. He's the almighty God, and he has a plan for me, and I get to be a part of his will. So, I mean, uh, so that, that right there can give you hope for the future. Hope that, um, that like, through, through the thick and the thin, you have someone to fall back on and uh, someone that truly, truly loves you. So... Um, if you can open your Bibles to Isaiah twenty six three. personal testimony how this verse changed my life. So I was a tributor for 10 years, um, all throughout elementary school, middle school, high school. I was on varsity my sophomore year, and every year you have to try out for the team again, and if you're on varsity, you think you're going to make it again. Well, that night I tried out, and I went to look at the list, and my name wasn't on the list. I hadn't made varsity again. I didn't make a team. And I remember just being so angry and upset. Like, I was just like, what the heck? Why didn't I make it? Like, she was my wife, but I just couldn't believe I didn't make the team. And um, around the same time, I was having a lot of friend issues. I didn't really have a lot of friends at school. No one really talked to me. No one asked me to hang out or any of that. And I was just like feeling so upset and angry and just all these mixed emotions. I just didn't understand why this was happening to me. Like. My whole life, everything had been handed to me, so I just felt like everything was being taken away from me. And I remember, like, I just thought, like, in time, everything would just fix itself. Like, I, like, I would just not feel any of this angerness and sadness anymore. But it, it just got worse. I just got really depressed and really angry, and I just didn't like the way I was living. And um, one day, coming from school, I just broke down and cried in my car in the parking lot. And I just remember like crying and telling God like, I can't do this anymore, like I need you, like I don't understand what's going on in my life and I need you, I need peace, like I don't have peace about this, like please, I trust you, I trust you know what you're doing and just give me peace. And every morning I woke up and I prayed that prayer every morning. Every day before I came to school, I would, please, I would say please, just give me peace, give me peace, I'm trusting in you, I'm trusting in you. And like, um, a couple weeks went by and I just like felt like all the angerness I felt with not making the team was just gone. Every like all the sadness without having new friends was just gone. Like God had just gave me a sense of peace within the situation. And I'm gonna read the verse one more time. So it says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. So going back to the verse, um, 
True peace is only obtainable when you're first trusting in God. God says he works all things for our good. Even in a bad situation, God will make them good. And he's not saying it's going to be easy, and he is not saying that we'll understand it. But we know God is sovereign, and um, that we can have peace in any situation if we trust in him, and we have our hearts and eyes and thoughts are fixed on him. Thank you. Why, like, why did I play basketball? I don't know. 
but I don't think they have. <laughs> and so, um, so then like I, I knew God gave me this injury for a reason because because of that injury I was able to go to Slovakia. Because of Slovakia I was able to grow in my faith, and so that just led me to have peace in the situation and to have peace that God's plan was right. Like, and even though it's not at all what I wanted, but it was what God wanted. Keep your head bowed and your eyes closed. My man just said, where do you struggle with peace? How many of you would say there's moments in your life where you absolutely struggle with peace? Anybody? I know you're not looking around, but just so you know, none of you are alone. That is for sure. We all have those moments. Think about the most current moment where you struggle with peace. Will you hand that over to God? He keeps in perfect peace the one whose mind is set on Him. Will you set your mind on Him and give whatever it is over to Him so He can be your peace? just to listen to these words so keep just being still. Verse 1 says, In faith I find true security in the Savior who set me free. Have you been set free by the Savior? That's where our security is found. And we want our security to be found in so many things. Relationships, material things, in faith I find true security in the Savior who set me free Jesus you are more than my eyes can see Jesus you are more than my eyes can see the chorus goes like this the more I love you the more I see you have me so keep in perfect peace the one whose mind is set on him the more I love you, the more I see you have me wrapped up in your perfect peace. The more I know you, the more I find your promises will keep me in your perfect peace. And we want peace, but we don't want to fall more in love with God. We want peace, but we don't want to know him more. How are you going to get peace, guys? Right? Because ultimately, verse 2, and love, God brought me all I will need for eternity. Jesus, you are more than this world can see. Jesus, you are more than this world can see. The more I love you, the more I see you have me wrapped up in your perfect peace. The more I know you, the more I find your promises will keep me in your perfect peace. And the bridge just breaks out and says, Man, let the world bring what it may. By your grace, I will stand and say, In your peace, I will stay. In your peace, I will stay. Let the world crumble around me. In your love, I will always be. 
where you're holding me through eternity. You'll be holding me through eternity. How many of y'all would say there's moments where you've definitely been longing for some peace? Anybody? And it's found in Jesus. It's found in a relationship with him. And like they said, we can be secure in that. Man, that's the only place our home needs to be. And you can pray right now or join me in song. Yeah. 
just trust in you. No matter what the world may want to say or do, Father, I thank you that you give us a spirit in our lives when we come to know you so that, Father God, we can have that fruit of peace rise in our life so that no matter what happens by our own doing, by somebody else's doing, or just because of circumstance, God, we can have peace no matter what. Because we put our mind and we set it on you. Thank you, Lord God, for this truth. And I pray that you'd help us to walk in this, Father. We, we got this message tonight for a purpose, Father. So I pray that as we go throughout these next few days, this next week, help us, Father, experience and feel your peace that passes all understanding. We know that we can if we have your son Jesus in our life. So it's in his name we pray. Amen. Don't move real quick. There is a young man 